first question is from Elfers215. Can heavy caffeine intake make it more difficult to drop body fat? Oh, actually, that's... And they put six to eight cups. Yeah, mm. that's, that's actually a pretty good question. I mean, because... look at me. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the the whole cortisol thing, right? We talk about cortisol junkies. Yeah, we... well, the studies show that caffeine um, has a positive effect. In other words, it helps burn body fat, could help suppress appetite, give people energy, burn more calories. In but terms the, of kinesthetic movement. Yeah, but pro the problem with that is that there are there's definitely a subset of the population that doesn't do well with caffeine. And if you abuse caffeine, it definitely induces this kind of stress state in the body, which can probably make you overeat uh, or make you not move as much. I know if I have too much caffeine, I get this paradoxical effect where my energy is not higher. It's actually lower and I feel more Well, isn't like, to Justin's point, isn't the research that supports the... the um, benefits of caffeine in regards to the movement it's not necessarily like caffeine goes in your system and helps speed your metabolism up or burn body fat it's that when you're on caffeine you you for the most part should have more, more energy fidgety, more activity like overall that's, activity increase that's got to be most of it i mean studies yeah. will show that it improves insulin sensitivity or at least coffee in particular mm -hmm. but you know here's the thing with caffeine does it improve your health or does it take away from your health because I've worked with lots of clients who were had this kind of HPA access dysfunction. Back mm. then, they used to call it adrenal fatigue. Overstressed, overworked, uh, hormone imbalances, and caffeine was not good for them. In fact, taking caffeine away after they adjusted improved their ability to burn body fat and build muscle. Yeah. So it's one of those things. It's got to be the right dose and, and for the right person. Too much is bad. Uh, it, it'll it'll make everything much worse. Yeah, I mean, if it's taken away from your recovery, if it's if it's hindering your the quality of your sleep, you know, the, all these things you have to kind of factor out uh, because those do contribute massively towards your goal of of losing fat. Well, yeah. There's going to be a massive individual variance here. Huge. I, I my personal. So when I start to feel, um, to your point, Sal, when I, there's there comes a point when I've been increasing my my caffeine intake over time that all of a sudden I get to this place where I'll have the fourth or fifth cup of coffee or rock star or energy drink. And I actually get tired almost yeah. right afterwards. Like it gives me like an initial little bit of a spark. And then 30 minutes later, I'm just like groggy. And There's I feel a sweet spot. If you teeter over, yeah, yeah. I have the same. Ex and so exact I experience. know that as I, as I start to slowly, right. Cause I always go all the way back down to like my, like my baseline for me is one cup of coffee in the morning when I start my day. It's kind of like mm -hmm. how I reset, right? So I'll go. I like that. Just, just I like waking up to that. Once I start to scale up to beyond that, and I start to feel those adverse effects, where either one, I get tired and I dip early in the day because almost I've had too much, or if I start to see it start to affect my sleep, which both those start to. And for me, that starts to happen, which is whatever the amount of caffeine is in. Uh, a rock star and two cups of coffee is kind of my threshold. Once I peak over that, They're probably around five or six hundred milligrams. Uh, that, well, I mean, the rock star is two twenty. Coffee is probably a hundred, right, or eighty each. Mm, or something depends like that. how big the coffee. Yeah, is. It's just a normal cup of coffee. Okay. It's not like a Starbucks venti. I'm talking about. See, talking I about take caffeine in typically capsule form, so it's measured. And I know for me, it's about three hundred to four hundred max. And if I work it up, work up to that, you know. The funny thing about caffeine is it's the most widely used uh, and I would say abused drug in the world. It's mm -hmm. super acceptable, but it's a classic drug. Classic. You build up a tolerance. It's got very bad withdrawal. Very Just like addictive. Going, oh, very addictive. Go off. Anybody who drinks coffee or has caffeine on a regular basis, stop cold turkey and then experience some of the worst withdrawal you'll ever experience in your life. I've, I've gone off cannabis cold turkey and it wasn't as bad as going off of uh, caffeine. So it's just one of those things, but it's the right dose. I know for me, the right amount of caffeine, for example, will give me a better workout. Too much makes my workout way worse, way now, worse. I think the point of this question is that, is caffeine have a, a, a mechanism that directly affects fat storage, which I don't think that's true, but I do think that to our point, you can get to a place where you're having so much of it that it then begins to affect energy levels, which then can affect workout potentially yeah. Yeah. and or sleep. And if you start messing with sleep, then yes, that will affect recovery, yeah. building right. muscle and those things. There's a cause but, and effect. But there's that. not like a, oh, once you hit over 400 milligrams of caffeine, you now start to store more body fat or something like that. No, that's not how this works. But 
each person probably has a threshold to where you start to see some side effects that could negatively affect you in your pursuit of fat loss or building muscle. Yeah, because the thing is, uh, it's a central nervous system stimulant, so theoretically it makes you burn more calories. But when you really look at the... You, you, you look at, just look around. Look how many people have caffeine and how many people are obese. It doesn't make up for extra calories. It doesn't make up for eating poorly or not exercising. And again, I'm going to make this, I can't stress this enough. If caffeine is, is causing your health to decline, if it's reducing your ability to thrive, if it's causing stress effects in the body, then it's going to hurt your ability to build muscle or burn body fat because when you're unhealthy, you just your hormones are off. You're not getting as good as sleep. You don't feel as good. And in that state of being, it's, you're not going to be as effective. I just think it's a good habit for you, everybody. If, even if you love caffeine and you don't think there's any negative effects from it, it's just a good habit to bring yourself down uh, every once in a while, you know, mm -hmm. every three or four months or six months. If you know you've been consistently having X amount and you, that X amount continues to grow, uh, that it's probably smart. And uh, I mean, for the, the least, it, it'll be cheaper for you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If you go, if you get to the place where, like I said, where I'm a rock star, two coffees, you know, that's basically three, six, you know, $10 of caffeine that I'm taking in a day, completely going back all the way to the direction, then it only cost me the 2 $3 for a cup of coffee to get the same effect. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think for financial reasons, it's smart to do it. And then also for the addictive properties that come with it.